Hello, and welcome to another episode of Get Your Fill, Financial Independence and Long Life, where we explore ways to achieve those two goals. And today we're going to have like a really special treat where Paul Ross is going to spring stuff on us and surprise us and delight us with all kinds of cool information. Paul Ross, he is on a passionate mission to help already successful entrepreneurs, like maybe you are, or maybe like you want to be, to skyrocket their revenue, which I know everybody wants to do, through tapping into the power of subconscious communication and subtle influence, like, you know, the mentalist. And he's an author, he's a speaker, he's a master hypnotist and a master trainer of NLP, Neuro Linguistic Neuro, I can't even say it. Never mind, do it. Neuro <laughs> neurolinguistic programming. Neurolinguini pasta. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, thanks so much for being with us today. I'm really, I, I can't wait to hear all the great stuff you have to share with us. Well, I'm delighted to be on the show. And I just want to say before we begin this exploration of the world of subconscious communication, I'm not sure all the points that your audience will find yourself getting really, really fascinated and focused on what it is I have to say. But as that's taking place, I feel so honored to be sharing this with you all today. And we're honored to have you share. <laughs> so Paul, tell me about how you got into this. I mean, well, I have an unusual background. I warned you about this. Yes, so, I can't wait for you to spring it on me. <laughs> you know, for the, about 30 years ago, I became an instructor for men on how to, I'm just going to say it, how to pick up and, and meet women, how to be successful with women, because I myself couldn't do it. And I discovered through using neurolinguistic programming, I healed my shame that I carried about my body. Back then, I'm six foot two, I'm a little chunky. Back then, I was six two and I weighed 127 pounds. Oh, so goodness. I had tremendous body shame and. Uh, just a lot of trauma around relationships and that. So I healed it and I began to teach men how to use these arts to be energetically attractive and through cultivating a lot of things. So what happened is about 20 years ago, I started to get emails from students saying, I use my stuff, met my fiance, here are pictures of my family. And by the way, I've been using it for sales and my sales have gone up by 200%, 300%. That sounds crazy, but what I'm going to present to you is bat bleep crazy. You'll see in a moment when I illustrate it. So I thought, hey, go back into your language lab, genius, and, and map it over into sales. So for the past 20 years or so, I've been teaching uh, already. I started out teaching everybody, but then I found that people don't implement unless they're really investing. And I like to work with people who are highly motivated, already successful. Not to say that if you're not, you can't benefit when you buy one of my courses. Did you hear that embedded command? <laughs> <laughs> buy the course. <laughs> I'm stepping on it a little bit so you can hear it in the course of a conversation. You wouldn't hear it consciously. And I discovered that really the key to selling, selling is about two things that appear to be contradictory, but in contradiction and paradox, there's power. To me, selling, first of all, is about expanding the consciousness of your prospect, about creating states of consciousness in your prospect. Let me explain what I mean by that. So your prospects, now, first of all, you're never selling your product or service. Absolutely not. Nobody wants you're, it. You're always selling right. decisions and good feelings about decisions. Yeah. You can view yourself as a decision service technician. But in order to make a good decision, you need to be in the right frame of mind. Now, your prospects come to you in some challenging frames of mind. First of all, they're not focused. It's hard to focus nowadays. Back when I was a young man, we didn't even have an internet. But when YouTube was first introduced, remember the ads were over a minute long and you couldn't <laughs> click off them? Now you have five seconds, you can click right off those puppies. We yeah. have Instagram, uh, which is a total distraction. We have Facebook instant messaging. We have TikTok you name it. Yeah. And so people don't have the focus they used to. And how many times, let's be honest, how many times do you check your phone a day? I know. I know. They're designed to be addicted. So yeah. that's the first thing. Second thing is your prospects don't trust themselves to make a good decision. No like and trust used to be the mantra. Yeah. 
I'm here to tell all my entrepreneurs who are salespeople, if you're not selling, your business dies. And professional salespeople, it's not enough to get no like and trust. Okay. You have to get your prospects to trust themselves that they can make a good decision. That, it's so true, Paul. I'm just going to interrupt you for one second because I've, I've found that to be the case. Do you feel like people's confidence is eroding or is this just something I didn't notice before? It is eroding, yes. Yeah. Not just in you. But in themselves. Yeah, exactly. They say, what yes. should I, you know, which house should I buy? I mean, I'm in real estate. I'm not going to tell somebody to buy a certain house, right? But, well, do you think we should buy this house? I'm like, dude. <laughs> and, and there's something else hidden underneath that. When you're selling uh, something that's a high ticket item, whatever it is, yeah. a home, a high ticket, your, your high ticket closer, because I work with a select group of people for that your prospect probably on a deep, deep unconscious level has some serious challenges with what they think they deserve. Yes. It's not just do they think they can't afford it is a good investment, do they really deserve it? So when you get them past that, you're actually doing healing work. Yeah. You probably never thought of selling as healing, but when you can expand their consciousness yeah. to include new beliefs about what's possible and what they deserve, you're actually doing healing work you're doing i i don't like the word spiritual but you're getting into a realm of helping people heal their deep subconscious and and their spirit so yeah. for those of you who have had a bad message in your mind bad beliefs about selling that limited you how does that now change when you view yourself as someone who's not just of service but who's in the service of healing your prospect i don't mean taking their blindness and making them see but I mean, <laughs> sense of changing their beliefs about what what they deserve yeah and that's i mean what a beautiful mission in order to do that you can't do that if you're coming from a place of not believing you deserve success Absolutely. so half of the training i do is no a third of the training i do with people is getting rid of those limiting beliefs which is can be a little challenging but that's my specialty being someone who's trained in hypnosis and NLP for 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it seems like it's a long, that would be like a long road of psychotherapy, right? Where you're just well, like, Oh, no, I'm not a therapist. <laughs> I'm a therapist. Uh, I can do it in a matter of uh, 60 days, unless wow. someone is really traumatized. If they're traumatized, I'm not a therapist. I, I have right. a, uh, I'll send them to a, a couple of good therapists that I know. I don't want to do therapy with people. Right. Not what I do. But the other aspect of selling is being crafty, is about getting, so using the power of suggestion to get some ideas into your prospect's mind. So it seems like a paradox. You're expanding their mind, but you're also getting ideas in there. So it's a paradox. But in paradox, there's power. I'll give you a metaphor. So if, uh, are people watching or just listening to this? Uh, they'll both? be watching it as well. Yep. All right. So for those of you who are both watching and listening, if you take your thumb and your forefinger, your first finger of your hand, and you do this, they work in opposition to each other. That's why they call it an opposable thumb. Right. They work in opposition to, but yet in cooperation with each other to manipulate our world to create something, to build tools, to write. If we didn't have that opposable thumb, we wouldn't be able to do it. So right. the metaphor is that things can be contradictory and yet at the same time work in cooperation with each other. Mm -hmm. So to have that view that, that selling is about expanding the mind of your prospects, but it's also about getting your ideas into their mind mm -hmm. appears to be contradictory, but in fact, they complement each other. So how do we do that without like, you know, look into my eyes or watch this. Oh, that's, watch. Or... <laughs> that's a myth. So you've hypnotized yourself into believing that. Uh, in fact, that's not the way it really works. So suggestions work like this. Let's say I wanted to create the perception that we have a relationship and I wanted to do it very quickly because remember, I don't have time to, to establish rapport and to keep that rapport going. Let's say I have a, something I want to present, whether it's to a group or on a video, and I can rewrite videos. I'm responsible for that, though. Uh, I wouldn't say, before I show you this marketing plan today, 
feel free to ask any questions that you want. And by the way, when you look at the plan, you'll see that we've sold five homes in your area at very good prices, et cetera, et cetera. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. I'd say before we begin our exploration together of our marketing plan, I just want to invite you to please share the questions that naturally arise when a great decision is being made. Now, did I say anything specific? Was there anything specific? Well, I mean, what do you mean by specific? I mean, you 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 brought them in, right? Everything was our and we and and together making great decisions, right? So th that's all excellent. Now, it was. I also used a very clever word. Did I say ask the questions no. that arise? No. I said share the questions. Right. Share implies a relationship, so right. words are powerful. Mark Twain said the difference between the right word and the wrong word is the difference between the lightning and the lightning bug. So we want, to be, we want to be wielding the lightning. We don't want to be the little lightning bug that they can smush or ignore. That's for sure. <laughs> cool. And so I also, let me point out, I'm sorry yeah. to step. Let me point out one more thing. Did I say a great decision to hire me or a great decision to buy my product? I was very vague. Sometimes not making the message clear is important. Everyone says, be clear, clear with your prospect at all times. I'm saying no. I'm coming from a completely contrary. This is what I teach. You can't get from off the shelf. It's not like all the other trainings you talk. Right. This is why I only want to deal with people who have a contrarian or different way of thinking. They're looking for something that's a completely different, even that bleak, crazy angle. So you need to confuse your prospects and be unclear at times. Give you an example when you're dealing with objections one of the most common objections you'll hear is i need more time to think it over mm -hmm. am i do you hear that one well not so much with home buying because they're usually already ready when they oh they're ready them. yeah okay, they're usually probably, ready by the time i get them <laughs> okay but you probably heard well um i'm interviewing i have appointments with a few more agents so can i get back to you do you hear that one um, that, yeah. So I mostly work by referral. So usually they are oh, okay. sold on me already, but I, yeah. that's something that a lot of people deal with, right? You go into someone's home and you're making your little presentation and they'll be like, okay, thanks. You know, we'll, we're, we'll, uh, like you say, we're interviewing a couple more people and we'll get back to you. Like, So I use what I call a pattern interrupt. What you need to understand is your prospects think, feel, respond, act according to predictable patterns. When you break that pattern, then they become temporarily suggestible. So if someone says, I need to interview more people, blah, blah, blah. I'll say, I understand. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever had the experience that the more options you were presented with, the more confused you became and the worse the decision you made? Now that immediately is going to shock the person like, well, of course that's true. Right. And then that gives them objection amnesia. They can't even remember the objection. <laughs> Maybe it's not about more. Maybe it's about clarity you need to recognize this really is the right decision. And you subtly point to yourself. You're not calling in an airstrike. It's a right, subtle right. tap. So that's called an anchor in NLP. So they associate it with you. They associate it with you. So, and, and if you do get that, I need more time to think it over. I would simply say, I understand. Can I ask a question? Have you ever taken a long time to think something over and it still turned out to be a horrible decision? Maybe it's not about time, but about the clarity you need to recognize you can move forward today. So thinking about that as we continue to talk together, what is it that we really need to get out on the table? Did you hear that word really? What is it that we really need or truly need? Yeah. Which implies, okay, you can tell me the truth. Yeah. Right, because if you hear that, I mean, obviously you haven't done a good job. Of but you have a fantastic, getting referrals is the best way to do things. Best. Best way. Best. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, it's, I, I hear other people talk about their lives and I just like, <laughs> I don't want to sell myself to people. But I also, I mean, I have a whole different, you know, whatever business model and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's, uh, but in every, I mean, the funny thing is when you first, when you just said your, your, um, routine breaking, you know, your, your, 
pattern interrupt. Your pattern breaking. Thank you. Your pattern breaking question. The, you know what immediately sprung to mind is uh, the Cheesecake Factory, right? You go to this place and they give you they give you a menu that has about thirty five pages. Too much. And you're just like, just bring me a you know ham sandwich. Like I just don't even want to deal with it because you know you're going to be like, oh, you know I should have got the other one. Right. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story. I love stories. I first learned about pattern interrupts when I was applying NLP to dating. Because I used to hear all the time, I'm sorry, you seem like a great guy, but I have a boyfriend. And I thought, what's a good pattern interrupt? I, uh, my pattern interrupt became, you don't need to convince me someone else finds you attractive. That's not how I make up my mind about you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm flipping the script. Their script is, I'm sorry, I, I have something that you want. And my script, I flipped it to, hey, I know you want me. Stop trying to convince me by pointing <laughs> out that someone else wants you. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, I, how much of this is like what a person is expecting when they walk into the situation, right? Because like you said, like that person's expecting, like I'm in, I'm interviewing you to see if I want you as my boyfriend. You're like, no, I'm interviewing you, right? This, I'm going to decide yeah, if I want to work Yeah, that requires vague you. language. This is, a, this is advanced stuff that I teach. But if someone came in and said, again, you don't have this challenge because you're working with referrals. But if someone came in and said, well, why should I work with you? Most people are going to try to explain the reasons why. I flip the script. I say, I can't be the one to say why you might find yourself coming to that conclusion. But as that's taking place, I would only want that to happen because you recognize this feels right to you. So that's completely vague and it's even a little confusing. I would say, I can't be the one, or I don't know how you might find yourself coming to that conclusion. The key phrase in there is find yourself. That's a very hypnotic phrase. What does find yourself mean? Did you ever just find yourself falling in love? If I'm, I may ask a personal question. <laughs> yeah, I guess I have. <laughs> okay. Did you ever just find yourself falling out of love and wondering what the hell was I thinking? Yeah. Did you ever just find yourself inside the refrigerator, not even remembering <laughs> that walk? Find yourself, discover yourself, allow yourself. These are what I call trance phrases. They imply and create an unconscious process where there's no resistance. There's no need to participate. And it even happens outside of your conscious awareness. It's a very powerful hypnotic suggestion. Interesting. Now, is it fair? If you're doing it in the service of your client, expanding what they believe they can have and overcoming their own self-doubt and their confusion, sure, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. You're not trying to sell them a Ponzi scheme here. You know, you're just, you're trying to help them to make a decision that you know is good for them. Mm -hmm. Yep. So Paul, it seems like there's so much to this. I mean, how, it sounds like it would take a lifetime to really learn this really well. Mm -hmm. Is that the case? Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that's all I was going to say. Like, how, how long would it take the average person? Because I, mean, I don't I, work even... with the average person. Okay, so how would it take the extraordinary person? It could be, and they'll start seeing some profound results. Like, I know this sounds bat bleep crazy, like an increase in their sales by 25 to 30% in 90 days. Wow. And then if they choose to continue to work with me, uh in in six months i've had people increase their sales by 50 percent. i know this sounds like crazy claims i don't want people to believe me at first that's why i offer something i offer my invisible influence series if i can if i can click on that just for a second sure and show you so this is a five-part series it's, you get little pdf reports each one deals with a different aspect, like getting out of your own way and building your own confidence, overcoming objections, using those little, the power of suggestion to create that buying frame of mind. They have a usable tip. In each one, you'll get a tip that you can actually go out and use. People say, do you have testimonials? And you'll find testimonials that I have that are genuine and real. But your best testimonial, your best proof is your own results. And because what I'm teaching is so out there, I give this away with the selfish motive of letting people convince yourself, wait a minute, this guy is for real. So if you want to get it, you can see the instructions there. 
text the word COMPEL to 411-321 and make sure you put in your best email address because that's how I'll get the goodies to you. If you're living outside the United States, use WhatsApp and text the word COMPEL to 741-1321. Excuse me, text the word COMPEL to 909-741-1321. That's 909-741-1321. Every five days, you'll get this little report that you consume in five minutes, and uh, you'll see some amazing results. Awesome. Awesome. That's fun. So I do have a way that I could apply this to my life because even though in addition to doing real estate, I also buy my own real estate. And right now I've bought a commercial space that I've turned into a co-working space. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's really fun and exciting. And that's where we are right now is in my little recording studio, but people are going to be coming into the space as soon as I get my, uh, all my inspections and everything. And, you know, I'm going to give them the tour and stuff like that, but I would love to be able to present it in a way that they could be feeling really confident that this is the right place for them. Right. They're like, mm -hmm. is that something you could apply this NLP to this type of an sure. environment? Sure. So. Um... You know that in the sales process, you have to ask the right questions. We know that's true. But I'm saying you need to prepare their mind yes. so they're ready to respond to those questions. You know, being in real estate, you know the concept of staging? Yes. That when you sell a process, uh, property, you need to stage it so it looks good. Yes. You need to stage your prospect's consciousness so that whatever you present looks good. So I would say something like, before we begin this exploration of this space, I'm not sure which parts of it might cause you to pause and think to yourself, wow, this is really for me. But as that's taking place, as we do our little walkthrough together, I want to invite you to please share whatever that is and any questions that might arise when a great decision is about to take place. That's what I would say. Beautiful. Because you need to stage consciousness first right. before you stage your proposition, before you stage your item, whatever it is. I don't care whether it's high ticket, pre, high ticket sales item, real estate, whatever. You need to, to stage your prospect state of mind. If I can give you a brief metaphor, I have a sheet of gold foil. Let me get in front of a sheet of gold foil and a sheet of cardboard. And I want to conduct electricity through that. Which one of those is going to conduct the electricity, the cardboard or the gold foil? The gold foil. Of course. So do you want your prospects in the cardboard state of being bored, not trusting themselves, not trusting you? Or do you want them in the gold foil state? Gold foil. Focused, excited, believing in you, believing in themselves. And if you leave that up to guesswork or to, ch or to chance, I don't want to leave anything to chance. You have to create that. Yes. And what I'm here to say is the standard sales trainings that don't work as well anymore because prospects don't have the focus and they've seen it before. Yes. Yeah. Everyone else is using it and a tactic identified as a tactic disarmed. And it may even insult their intelligence. And if you insult, it's one thing to bore a prospect. It's another thing to insult them. So, Paul, <clears throat> I'm just thinking, is this even something that you could begin before you meet the person, like on your website and things like that? So you can set the stage before they even ever Absolutely. meet I, I have two clients now, whereas part of the program, I am rewriting, because in addition to being a master of NLP and hypnosis, I've been writing my own sales copy for 30 years. I made a lot of money, haven't kept it all. But I made a lot of money learning to copyright. So There's when no you fun in keeping it, Paul. <laughs> huh? What? There's no fun in keeping it. <laughs> no, well, it depends on who you're supporting. Sure. So I, I I know how to write copy that's compelling, but I also know how to drop suggestions in hypnotic language inside of the copy. So yeah, you can do this from the stage. If you really hire someone who knows what they're doing, you can also do it in video sales letters. Uh, and sometimes it's a subtle difference. It's just a subtle difference that makes the difference between getting them riveted onto that page and following along in the story 
and pushing on the pain points, not too hard. So they get the perception. What you want to do is you want to give them the perception that you understand the problem. The person who gives the best diagnosis is going to win over the person who has the best solution because they have to feel that they understand you, that you understand them. It's hard to do it in print. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Interesting. But the other thing I think that would be maybe even an, not unexpected, but, or not even unintentional, but another nice side effect that would come out of this is because the person, the salesperson is already feels comfortable that they know what they're going to say and how it's all going to go, that their confidence would be higher as well. And that they would even present better. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And also there's a kind of confidence. There's the kind of confidence where you believe that you can win, but there's another kind. And this is something that's not taught in any sales training. It sounds like I'm bragging, but I am, I am bragging. (laughs) I learned this from my training with guys who are clueless with women because they have so many negative emotions, they would make a little progress, right? but conclude they're losers because they couldn't, they didn't grasp all the skills. Right. So here's a principle of, of personal change. The closer you get to the level of skill to really be masterful, the more frustration you're going to encounter because you'll be in situations that you've never been in before, but you won't have the piece to complete it. I see you nodding your head. So developing what I call learning confidence, having a systematic way of learning from every experience. How many times have you been to a motivational speech or whatever, and you hear them say, learn from every experience? Has that happened to you? Yeah, yeah. And for those in the audience, has that happened? Now I invite you to answer this question. How many times are those people giving you a specific exact process to do that? Zero. So it's like saying if my car was broken down in the desert, I know nothing about cars. I can put the gas in and and steer and step on the brake and the gas. And that's it. That's like my car is broken down in the desert. My cell phone has 3% battery. I call the mechanic. I explain the problem. He said, well, I don't have any ability to get out there to you, but just it's the fragistat from what you're saying. Just take your witsit and twist it to the fright of your fragistat. And then the phone dies. (laughs) Yeah, I can't execute. (laughs) So one of the very unique things that I offer either in my courses or, but also in the personal training is how do you learn from your mistakes? So you build learning confidence. So you go in there with the attitude, I'm either going to make the sale or I will learn what I need to make the next ones. What I want to say, here's a a mic drop for you. Champions have this attitude. I'm interested in the sale. I'm invested in my skills. Most people have it asked backwards. I'm invested in the sale, but I'm just interested in my skills. And a breakfast of bacon and eggs, the pig is invested. The chicken is interested. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I told you I'd be a great guest. You're a great guest, Paul. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Fun. Awesome. So, okay. So the, obviously the first step that someone needs to take is they need to text. Te- yeah. Hello. I'm, I'm not speaking today. They need to text the word compel, C-O-M-P-E-L to 411321. And because we have listeners in over 50 countries, will you please give us the WhatsApp again? Yes. It's 909 909- 741 1321. It should also be there in the. Um, oh, it is. Sorry, it's in the fine print. But the yeah, other excellent. thing. So is, we'll put that in the I show do, notes as well. I do only work with like five private clients a, a year or five training teams. If you feel from listening to what you've already heard that you want to jump in and apply to work with me, and I do have a thorough application process because, again, I'm not joking. You have to be able to afford my fee, which is not small. It's a big fee, mm-hmm. uh, but it, it brings results. You can go to speaker Paul Ross forward slash apply. I pour over every application. Uh, and also you really have to, you really have to get your, be willing to get your butt kicked a little bit and take on a different perspective. This is a totally screwball. You can tell already from the things I presented, this is not <laughs> conventional way of looking at sales. 
So those are the requirements. You have to be able to afford it. You have to be able, willing to work and you have to have a mindset of, of saying, all right, I really do want something different. Yeah. I do only have slots every year for like uh, three, two, three, maximum five people. So if you feel that you would like to talk to me, uh, first fill out the application. If you want to jump right to that, it's speaker Paul Ross forward slash apply. And I'll, I'll go through all of them. And then if you hate me, you don't like this interview, uh, just forget, forget it. I don't want, you know, if <laughs> I don't take hate mail anymore. And why would anyone hate me? <laughs> no one would hate you, Paul. <laughs> now, but it, I mean, it, at the very least, right, everybody should at least take the, you know, get the, get the little, you know, email drips because, it's going to expand your horizon. It's going to allow you, as you said, it's going to allow you to see that it works. And they're five minutes. I, I, because I recognize that people, successful people, uh, someone told me successful people, the, the most valuable thing they have, the rarest thing they have is not money, it's time. Because I only want to deal with successful people. I keep it short. It's a five minute read. Yeah. 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 If someone has all day to read it, well. <laughs> five minutes. Yeah. Excellent. That's perfect. That's perfect. Are there any other things that like, even before people have a chance to do that, is there any other things that you think we should be like incorporating into our daily conversations yes. with, with life, with people? Yes. Yes. Uh, I call this again, this is completely contrary to, to what people teach that you should always present yourself as the expert who knows the answers. I teach what I call the false profession of ignorance. So when someone says, why should I hire you? Why should I buy this property? Instead of giving the reasons, you can give the reasons later. You can present the facts, data, and numbers later. I would say, I don't know how you might stop and find your own reasons for wanting to do that. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Instead of saying, well, here are the reasons, and I know, I use those words, I don't know, or I can't tell, or I can't be the one to say how you might stop. So I don't know, I can't tell, I can't be the one to say. And then that magic word, stop. Wow. Stop is a hypnotic command that literally stops their conscious train of thinking and then puts them into a subconscious state of being very suggestible. We use suggestion all the time anyway. The power of suggestion is not something that some guy wearing a top hat and a and tails and a coat and swings his watch. That just gives me <laughs> vertigo and makes me, uh, makes me nauseous. No, we use the power of suggestion on ourselves all the time anyway. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I'm good enough. Oh, look, that person's out of my league. By the way, for you uh, ladies and gentlemen who are single, when you start to think they're out of my league, think there's no one out of my league when I know how to step up to the plate. Absolutely. That's nice. <laughs> but you know it's interesting when you were saying that like why should someone work with you well you, you don't know what their rationale is right no. are you a person who's going to be influenced by a whole bunch of numbers are you a person no. who wants a touchy no. feeling answer right you no. can't really answer that question well for anyone so first you want to set the stage where they're already in the process of convincing themselves Right. Before you give them the before. Now, I agree asking those questions to find out whether they're data driven or touchy feely or any of that. That's important. But yeah. who says that you have the right to hear those answers? Who says that you're going to they're going to speak truthfully to you? Who says they even know? So first, create suggestions where they find their own reasons to want to do it and where they just they think of you as a leader. I have a I forgot this mic drop. When you use that explore before we explore this home together, yeah. exploration is a super powerful magic word. And I'll tell you why. First of all, it implies novelty, right? When you explore, yeah. it's novelty. Absolutely. Something novelty, yeah. novelty is a hardwired driver of human behavior. It's through evolution or God or whatever you believe, it's hardwired into the human brain to seek novelty. So when you imply or present an opportunity for novelty, it wakes up the brainstem. Now you're going beneath the subconscious mind into the brainstem, into the amygdala. Second, here's what it implies semantically and linguistically. 
For every explorer, there must be a leader. And for every leader, there must be a what? Follower. Exactly. Or an explorer. So you're implying on the unconscious level that you are their leader. You're doing it in the space of a sentence with other words surrounding it. Now, there's a law in hypnosis called the law of compound suggestion, which simply says if you make a suggestion, each suggestion builds on the previous one. And if you have three words that are positively charged, that carry a positive emotional charge, when you use them together or in short order, close to each other, the mind has to surrender. It's the law of three. It cannot take on negative emotions if you use. So before we explore together, these are all positively charged words. So that's another way in which it works. I like to think of myself as the Mike Tyson of sales. When you watch, for those of you who are not familiar with Iron Mike, watch videos on YouTube. This guy would throw combinations. It's, it's a violent metaphor and I shouldn't use it, but I wanna use every tool I can, throw combinations, left, right, hooks. It's a terrible metaphor, right? Forget, find, <laughs> allow yourself to quickly and yeah, easily, <laughs> allow yourself to quickly and easily find yourself wiping that metaphor from your mind. What metaphor? <laughs> exactly. And I know what I and I know what he meant her for. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. So <clears throat> I'm just I'm thinking about just to to kind of like add a little levity to what has been kind of serious and kind of heavy and kind of interesting. Not, have I not been a little funny and made you laugh? You've been funny, but you know what I want to hear is like a funny story from when you were um, coaching men to help. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. I'll tell you a story. Okay. Right. I'll tell you a story. So I still do it as a side hustle occasionally uh, because I feel that someone's got to rescue these guys. I had a right. guy come to me 15 years ago. He said, would you take me out to a club or a bar and show me how to meet women? I, I, that's like pulling teeth. I said, it's $15,000 cash for two hours, thinking I'll put him off. He said, okay. okay. He comes to my condo in Marina Del Rey, which is near Venice Beach, California. He's got a... a a satchel and he dumps $15,000. I quickly counted it like, okay, <laughs> let's go. I took him to a restaurant that has an outdoor lobby, uh, not a lobby, outdoor patio yeah. where people can meet and talk to each other. This guy proceeded to strike out in ways that were absolutely humiliating. Have you ever been so humiliated for someone else's embarrassment? You couldn't take it yeah. <laughs> to his, to his credit. He had like a smile on his face, women threw drinks in his face and told them to do things with his anatomy that are not possible to do. Wow. Finally, I couldn't take him. I, I, I dragged him out of there. It was about 1 a.m. in the morning and we were waiting for our cab. This is 15, 20 years ago. And I said, look, there's a beautiful young lady waiting for her cab. Now it went in the wrong ear. She got <laughs> furious with me and she swore at me in ways that would make a sailor turn pale. She brought up things I should do to my relatives. It was awful. He got really mad. He went to charge at her. I put my arm out. I said, no, she can do whatever she wants. We decide where we come from. Look at her. She's someone's sister. She's someone's daughter. She's someone's best friend somewhere. She's deeply loved. Now, there was a moment of confusion and then the rage disappeared and she burst into tears. She ran over to me, threw her arms around me, planted kisses over my, over on my cheeks and said, that's the most loving thing I've ever heard. I've never felt so much love in my heart for someone I don't know. I'm so sorry, this wasn't about you. Men were such pigs to me. She said, can I give you my number? I said, sorry, I'm taken. Bye. And we jumped in the cab. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's an example of coming from a place of compassion, but also not putting up with her BS. Right. So notice what I did. And if you're in sales, notice the lesson, the metaphor. I didn't make it about me. I made it about there's a human being in pain. It's got nothing to do with me. The even more subtle lesson is I didn't make it about her. I didn't say she's a B word or I'm not going to get vulgar on your show. I didn't say she's a witch or blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I thought, no, it's not about her. It's about 
again, she's a person in pain yeah. rather than be, feel her pain. She's letting it come out as anger because anger gives us the illusion of being at cause, even though we're not, it's the anger is dangling us wrong. And the final thing is I didn't, I, I gave her permission to have her first response, but I didn't accept it as her best response. I interrupted her pattern to give her a better response to have. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So that's a story for, and I have tons of stories. I've had students who did not listen to me, <laughs> got restraining orders, got arrested. I mean, it's, it's been a wild ride. <laughs> you're dealing with people who are, who are mostly really damaged and, and, and don't know how to handle life. So yeah, that's, that's one of my better stories. And you can't see it because I have this green screen up. Yeah. Tom Cruise actually played a, uh, a character loosely based on me in the movie Magnolia. Really? Yes. You'll have to watch it. Yeah, you'll have to watch that movie. Cool. Excellent. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. I never Weekend met project, him. I'll watch a movie. I, uh, <laughs> I never met him. I never made any money, but it did get me a date with my intellectual property attorney who just wasn't having it. She kept telling me, <laughs> you're a client. And when the movie came out, I said, Janine, this is now about my intellectual property, which you have a fiduciary duty to protect. So you have to go to the movies with me. <laughs> so I did get a date out of it with Janine. <laughs> Thank you, Janine, Paul. wherever you are. <laughs> awesome. Paul, thanks so much. So before we close, is there anything that I should have asked you that I didn't ask you? Anything that you want to share? Any like, you know, who was my, we who were, uh, I think here's a good lesson. Who were my biggest teachers in, in, in coming up with all this, because it didn't just come up out of thin air. Yeah. So I want to give credit to my teachers. My first great mentor, Richard Bandler, the co-creator of neurolinguistic programming. I recently had him on my own podcast, The Influencer's Edge, and he was very gracious to come on. So number one, Richard. But second, it's going to sound like I'm a mom of this boy, my mom. My mom was tied for the greatest teacher of my life, because my mom taught me some really beautiful lessons. When I was a kid, as you could probably imagine, I was a kid who talked back a lot. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I did. I know, hard to believe. So I remember when I was like six years old and I was sassing my mom and she shook her head. She shook her finger. She said, Paul, if you don't knock it off, you'll grow up to be an iconoclast. <laughs> iconoclast. She said that's someone who goes around kicking over other people's sacred ideas and getting them really angry. I said, I want to be an iconoclast, mommy. How do I grow up to do that? But the second thing she did is she gave me permission to think for myself. I remember work, I come from a Jewish family. I'm not observant, but I came from a Jewish family. And I remember I had to compete to get attention at the dinner table because my siblings, except for my younger brother, Stevie, uh, were all older than I and very smart and articulate. So my way of doing it would be to say something shocking. As you can see, I still like to do it. So I could say something like, mom, I'm a Christian. And she said, <laughs> rather than getting mad, she said, okay, what do Christians believe? <laughs> and I didn't know. She said, I want a book report tomorrow <laughs> before sundown. Uh -oh. If it's a bad book report, you're grounded. If it's a good one, I'll give you a silver dollar. Back then, I just turned 64. Back then, money was silver. I mean, yeah. actual silver, yeah. the precious metal. And we had, a, even though we were broke, we had a set of encyclopedias at all times, even though we had no money, we had money for books. I could say I'm a communist, which in my family was really blasphemy. And she would say, okay, what does a communist believe? And the final thing she said to me, and I wouldn't be here today without, I wouldn't have made a penny or be here or be a teacher that I am. She said to me, you're going to grow up to be the Johnny Appleseed of ideas. I said, who is Johnny Appleseed? So Johnny Appleseed would go from town to town planting little seeds and come back later and see the trees blossom. She said, you'll be the Johnny Appleseed of ideas. I thought, okay, I want to grow up to do that too. Yeah. So I'm both an iconoclast <laughs> and the Johnny Appleseed of ideas. I love it. <laughs> Thanks to my mother. My father was a brilliant guy uh, and devoted to learning and a scholar, but it was my mother who who gave me those ideas awesome awesome may she rest in peace and may her memory be for a blessing yeah awesome 
Paul, thanks so much for sharing this with us today. It's just been a blast talking with you. Awesome. I, it's been an honor to, to share and to teach. Which is, teaching is, and healing are my great loves. Yeah, nothing like it. Excellent. And thank you, listener, for listening. I know you're going to want to watch this and listen to it over and over again. But in the meantime, before you do that again, text COMPEL to 411321 or the other number that I'm going to put into the show notes because there's no reason not to, right? You might as well hear the things and, and, and embody the things and just test it out. If you think that Paul's full of baloney, then you have an opportunity to prove it to yourself or disprove it to yourself, right? <laughs> right. Awesome. And have a wonderful week. And we'll see you next week.